There are multiple titles used for the scholars and students of Islam. Mufti, Sheikh, Imam, you'll have come across many popular figures with these titles and you might have wondered what do these actually mean, what's the difference and where can I learn about it? Well in today's video inshallah I aim to educate you so that you don't have to wonder anymore. Let's get into it. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sharukh. Welcome to Raise Your Deen, the channel where I try and deliver Islamic education and practical advice for Muslims. And today we're going to be talking about Islamic titles and what they all mean. So let's start with the word Sheikh. Now Sheikh is an interesting one because it seems to be used by quite a wide variety of people with not much connection. For example, you have the oil sheikhs of the Middle East who have a certain character, image, personality to carry out certain actions. And then on the other hand, you have someone like Sheikh Hamza Yusuf who are quite different on the face of it. So what is it that connects those two? Why are they both called Sheikh? Well, it turns out that the word Sheikh can be translated from the Arabic to mean the English word elder. And it's mainly used as a term to designate the elder males of a tribe as those deserving of respect. So basically the term Sheikh can be used for any respected person within the community. And in the context of Islam is often used for respected Muslims. And a Sheikh can end up having other responsibilities as well. In some communities they are not only respected, but they're also given the task and privilege of guiding or protecting a group of people, solving religious disputes, and just helping to administer the law amongst his people. And that's quite different from the term Imam. Now the word Imam in the Arabic language means leader and remember Sheikh meant elder and Imam means leader. Now in everyday terms Imam is an Islamic title used for the leader of the mosque in the Muslim community amongst Muslims. Most if not all mosques will have their own Imam who will lead prayers at the mosque, serve as community leaders in that sense and provide religious guidance for people who request it. In that sense an Imam can be anyone in the Muslim community who comes forward in the mosque to lead the prayers of that mosque. Sometimes it could just be a member of the gathered congregation rather than an official appointed salaried person. In that case according to to hadith, the person that should be chosen from the congregation is the imam of the mosque. For those prayers should be the person with the most knowledge of Quran, Sunnah and someone of good character. Now that's how the term imam is used in an everyday sense. But as I said at the start, the term actually means leader. And so it's a title that's sometimes given to leaders of the Muslim community. Probably the best example of this is four most influential scholars in Islamic history who were the leaders behind the four main schools of Islamic thought prevalent today are also known as Imams. I should also mention that for Shia Muslims and in Shia Islam, the term Imam means something quite different. Imams are much more important figures, central to their faith, and the term is mainly only used to describe members of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's family, such as Imam Hussein and, and Imam Ali. And if you want to learn more about Shia Muslims, I've just made a video about it, you can click up on that card right there. Moving on to the term Mufti. And the term Mufti these days is probably most well known and associated with Mufti Menk, who's very very popular nowadays on social media and YouTube and as far as I'm aware a mufti is an authority figure someone that's been given the authority to issue legal opinions otherwise known as fatwas and a fatwa is a particular ruling given on a point of Islamic law. Muftis have often qualified from a university or institution of Islamic sciences and have some kind of degree or specialization in a particular field. Most governments and especially most Muslim governments usually have a mufti appointed who assists that government and gives out official fatwas to help the people of that nation live a modern Islamic life. Mufti Menk, for example, is widely known internationally for his motivational speeches and Islamic lectures, but he also holds a position as the head of the fatwa department of the country Zimbabwe. And as I said, Muftis often hold degrees or some kind of doctorate from an institution and Mufti Menk himself, as well as studying Sharia in Medina, holds a doctorate of social guidance from Aldersgate University. I'll be making a video soon detailing more things about Mufti Menk and how he became such a rising phenomenon, such a global superstar. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that. And now for a quick one, Hafiz. Hafiz can be translated to preserver or memorizer and is a title used to refer to someone usually who has memorized the Quran. It's a title that only a blessed few of our community have and it's one that we should all strive to attain if possible. Inshallah, may Allah give us the strength and guidance to do so, if that is our intention. Moving on, the title Molana. Now Molana is a difficult one and my research was a little bit contradictory but from what I can tell it's a title mainly used in Asia and in India and refers to someone who's a respected Muslim figure and they're often graduates of Islamic universities or religious institutions like madrasas. And the terms Molvi and Mullah are quite similar. They're usually used to refer to someone who's studied Islam at a university or institution, holds some sort of degree, quite popular in the Asian, South Asian countries, but they can also be used just generally and every day to refer to a, a religious Muslim man 
and the meanings of those three, Molana, Mulvi, Mulla, they're not quite as ironclad as the other ones that I mentioned previously. Moving on, the term Alim, otherwise known as Ulama, translates from Arabic. It's usually a term used to refer to those, any person who has studied Islam, a wide variety of Islamic sciences. For example, the Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, reasoning, usually they've studied that for several years. They're Muslims of knowledge who have taken their Islamic studies to the next level with dedicated time and effort. They're usually aware of what counts the main consensual opinions of most Islamic scholars. They're also usually aware of the controversies and objections of other scholars. They're students of Islam that basically know a lot about Islam, having studied it for several years. And it's quite common for them afterwards to take up positions teaching other students who haven't studied as much so far. Finally, the term Ayatollah. It's, it's a term mainly just used in Shiism or Shia Islam. It can be translated to sign of God and it's usually used to refer to the highest religious authority of the Shia community or sometimes the grand scholars of Shia Islam. Hopefully you found that breakdown useful. And that's the sun come out now. I think it's time for me to go. I apologize if I've made any mistakes in this video. I've, I've done as much research as I can, but I may still have made a mistake. And if so, please feel free to comment down below and tell me about it and I'll try and change it. One thing I want to emphasize is that these terms are not a class system. They're not some kind of differentiator of, oh, if you're a mufti, then you'll definitely go to heaven. And if you're a sheikh, then you might go to this heaven. And it's, it's, it's not like that. Islam as a religion highlights that the way to elevate yourself in the eyes of God is to try and elevate yourself through piety, action. This is outlined in the Quran and on the verses that I'll put on screen just now. And so it's important to remember that there's no priests or monks in Islam. There's no intermediaries or people that are going to intercede for us specifically on the day of judgment. We're all responsible for our own actions and we should take responsibility to try and improve our own standing by gaining more knowledge of Islam. And one way of doing that is to subscribe to my channel. Anyway guys, that's all for today. References are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum.